everyone. This is Matthew from Music Wizard Group. I'm your host for today's event. I want to welcome you all to the Piano Wizard Academy webinar. We're seconds from getting underway here. Um, so welcome to all of you that are on right now from all over the world as we wait for many more to join. Today we're going to hear from the CEO and founder of Music Wizard Group, and he's going to share special details about this revolutionary product with you that you've been hearing all about recently called Piano Wizard Academy. Now, something you need to know about this gentleman before I introduce him, actually quite a few things. Uh, for 12 years before he developed this life-changing product, he dreamt about what he's going to be sharing with you today, meticulously planning and creating every intimate detail, solving his very own problem of not being able to read music fluently. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, not only did he create this product and this solution from personally being in the trenches of not knowing how to play and attempting to read music, but it also led him to go on and get his double degree in both linguistics and music. And because of all that, he brings a very interesting perspective to how we learn that you won't find anywhere else. Um, and he's really integrated that into the system, which you'll soon discover. Now, as I said earlier, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of person that I want to learn from. I want to learn from someone that's been there and done that. Um, and to know that that's the core of how this product was developed um, really makes it different. And that's what makes it completely different than anything else on the market. Um, today, the Piano Wizard Academy is being called the world's greatest music learning system ever created and released, hands down the best solution to learning how to read music and play in the shortest amount of time possible. So without further ado, I bring to you the CEO and founder of Music Wizard Group, also the creator of Piano Wizard Academy himself, Mr. Chris Salter. Hello and uh, welcome to the webinar. This is Chris Salter with uh, Music Wizard and uh, thank you very much for joining me here today. I'm uh, going to basically give you an overview of the Piano Wizard Academy and then I'm going to uh, answer some common uh, questions and uh, take some of those submitted by you. Uh, you'll see a, a form where you can submit that uh, below and go ahead and uh, send those through. Uh, you'll find a box that says submit your questions here as I'm talking and going through this. Uh, type your question in the box and submit. In the end, I'll answer them uh, directly. I will we'll obviously take the best uh, questions that are most general. Uh, if you have uh, you know, technical questions or, or things that maybe are beyond the scope of this webinar, uh, we may have our team just you know, follow up with you later. Okay, so uh, let me get going here and uh, start off here. First of all, many of you don't have any idea what the Piano Wizard Academy is. It's an amazingly simple patented video game technology that has virtually anyone, even three-year-olds, playing Beethoven or Billy Joel in minutes. And as outrageous as that claim is, it's very, very true and a uh, wonderful experience. And unlike, say, Guitar Hero Rock Band, um, we use real music and real instruments, and our joke is you might even get a real girlfriend. Uh, our vision is to take this nonviolent creative music video game system and make music a birthright that touches millions and millions and millions of lives. Uh, and I know this sounds too good to be true, uh, but just take a look at some of these rave reviews, and uh, you can see there on the next slide on the critical acclaim there if you're watching online. The... The Wall Street Journal, Keyboard Magazine, uh, you know, Mac Life. I mean, it goes on and on. It, we've been very, very well treated by the press, and uh, you know, I can you can look that up. Just uh, do a search for Google, uh, you know, Piano Wizard reviews, and you'll find these things online. We've been uh, very, very blessed by their response. And then there's a number of awards. Uh, Top Toy. Uh, we were voted, uh, you know, we were nominated for Toy of the Year twice in a row. Um, you know, this is this is really resonating with a lot of people, and you can do your own due diligence on this as well. Uh, but you know, again, I go back to why uh, we believe music can be a birthright, and that this is something that is something so big that it has to get out there. Uh, ironically, through a video game technology. Here's how we do it. Um, you're going to see me walk you through what's the four-step method of the game. And then what we've created with the academy is the fifth step, get people off the game, 
playing at the real piano. But, but here, in a nutshell, you see the four-step method, and I'm going to go through them one at a time. On step one, you see this color-coded keyboard at the top. We give people a digital keyboard um, that acts almost like a joystick. They get color-coded washable, removable stickers. They put them on their digital keyboard, and it corresponds one-to-one -one with the keyboard at the top of the screen. And you see uh, in here, it's maybe a little hard to see, but there's uh, these bugs going up the screen. These are ladybugs, different colored ladybugs, and they, uh, they block them when you hit the right keys at the right time. And so as that, those bugs cross that line at the top of the bottom, there's a green line at the bottom of the keyboard, and they have between the green and the red to get it, and the yellow is the target area. And so the kids know exactly by color coding which keys they're supposed to hit, and they can anticipate it coming so they know when to hit them. And this works much better than we actually thought it did. We literally have two- and three-year-olds, anyone who knows their colors, playing Beethoven and Billy Joel in, in seconds and then really mastering the songs very quickly in minutes. So we're, we're very delighted. Now, that alone would be a great, great thing if, we, if that's all we did is just got people playing real music. But in fact, uh, we have a secret agenda here, and you see it on step two, how we rotate the whole screen counterclockwise, the same game, and you see the game objects, the bugs, moving now from right to left, and they're crossing that, that same plane, and the kids just tilted their heads. They didn't miss a beat, but now they see how music notation orientates pitch vertically and how the piano relates to that, okay? We thought this transition would be tough. The kids literally did not miss a beat, just tilted their heads and, and totally got this. Uh, but the reason we do this is not just an abstract idea, we are really taking them here to step three, where we change out the background and we change the color-coded uh, game objects into these musical notes, okay? And now the kids are recognizing, oh, I was playing music, and this is how music notation represents what I already know how to play, okay? They've already mastered this song at this level, and now they're recognizing how music notation represents. They've still got the color coding, but in between step three and four, we have ways to wean them off of that. We put note names in there so they can recognize the names of the notes. We put in the fingerings so they know exactly where each finger should go. And then we take them away from that and we, and we go to the black notation streaming through. But again, they're recognizing something they already know. And this is being absorbed. You know, there's kinesthetic audio, visual feedback. And they're, they're reading music notation in minutes instead of months. It doesn't matter how much theory you know ahead of time. It's sort of like knowing the theory of, of the QWERTY keyboard wouldn't help you type. You just have to hit the B and hit the A and hit the E at the right, you know, sequence. The same thing with this. These kids just hit the right notes at the right time. And Bach said that 300 years ago, and uh, that's all he did. And so we made it that simple. And this is profoundly simple to the point where it really means anybody, virtually anybody, can learn to play the piano in minutes. Now... That being said, this is a great game, and it teaches kids to hit the right notes at the right time, and teaches them to read very fluently, get through that first you know, phase of, of reading, just with repetition, really, uh, very well. But it is not a complete music education system. Uh, it doesn't teach phrasing. It doesn't teach dynamics. It doesn't teach posture, technique. All the art of music, you know, the, the emotion, all of that still has to be taught and transmitted and shared with you know, the, the user with the human being. So we went ahead and we created what we call the Piano Wizard Academy. And this leverages all the power of the game, all the concrete learning, but has 50 videos that go along with it that show the parent, a non-music educator, say at a church, a piano teacher, anybody, or, you know, an adult learner just wanting to go through it themselves, how to basically leverage the game's concrete learning and take it off the game and you see in step five in the right-hand corner there on the slide that they're off the game reading at the sheet music. Now, you may think this is, well, that, you know, that would take months. In fact, literally in a half an hour on the first simple songs, the kids are off the game at the grand piano reading, and it's amazing to see. And it's really just because they got, they got the, the essence of the, of the song down very quickly, and then we're able to, to see through the translations and the, the notation and get back to the music that they already know how to play. So this has been very, very powerful, and this is what the Piano Wizard Academy is. It took us years to develop the software, 
took us years to develop the curriculum, and then again years to develop the whole video accompaniment that showed how to leverage all this. There's 50 video lessons, each of the first 50 songs in easy mode. There's over 100 songs in easy mode that are a carefully designed curriculum, a two-note song, another two-note song, a three-note song, a five-note song, and the hundredth song is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony for two hands. And these kids have gone through as many as 20 songs in a single week. It is not a little better. It's a lot better. How do we get such spectacular results? We, we really take the, a very linguistics approach. My background, I have a degree in linguistics and in music, and I've always been fascinated with the crossover, in particular developmental linguistics, which is the study of how children learn their first language. And that, that is really where, you know, um, I'm also a very visual learner, and I saw that, you know, music had a, a path that could be very visual. I learned this, uh, you know, I'll get to that, you know, later on. But the big power we have here is that w by laying this out in a video game format, the kids can see these very abstract concepts like pitch and time on a color-coded musical grid. And it's a kind of a moving piano tablature in living color. And this works spectacularly. They know which key to hit because of the color, and they know when because they can anticipate it. And as Bach said, I just hit the right keys at the right time. Uh, and that's really what we, we do. But Vince Lombardi, the great Zen master, said practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Because these kids can anticipate and they can get to the, the right notes, they're, they make far fewer mistakes the first time, and then they are able to correct them. Really, within two or three tries, they're often at 100%, if not on the very first try. So they're not unlearning all these things. They're really honing in and they're getting the visual feedback, and, and that is the superb thing here is that this is a brilliant practice vehicle and we master things when we love to practice and in this case practice is a game the learning is, is very concrete again uh, they learn through auditory visual and kinesthetic interaction and feedback it uses only positive feedback so they love it right they're not you know being humiliated in any way and they just hone in on, on getting the right notes so in the same way that we learn to speak our native language first, right, with the loving interaction and, and feedback of our parents, and then we learn, you know, to read words that we already know, okay, and only then do we learn about grammar, you know, the theory. The same way these users, these players, these kids, learn to play the songs, then they recognize how music notation represents what they know how to play. Again, the representation is not the language. The language is what we speak. The words on the page are representations of what we speak. Music is not the representation. It's not the notation. Music is what they play, and then the notation is what a representation of what they play so that they can take that, go to the sheet music, and take that to Grandma's house and play it and then read for her. And that's the beauty of this, and it's working you know, far better than we really hoped for. Right? So some of the benefits is, is it teaches real music skills through this revolutionary nonviolent music video game experience. But the gratification is instant and the success is instant. So these kids are just running from the beginning and they're pushing themselves. You do not have to nag ever again for that. In fact, you're having an argument. You know, you've been on this for half an hour. Your sister's turn now. You know, it's time for you to eat. You know, it's a completely different conversation. We've had parents actually deprive their kids of their piano practice until they did their homework. Okay, so that, there's, a, there's a whole paradigm shift here. And it is not just for children. It's for anyone who wants to learn to play the piano, read music quickly. And there is a, the reason we can say that is because there's an infinite choice of MIDI songs. This is an open source game, and we'll use a technology called MIDI, Music Instrument Digital Interface. It's been around for 20 years. There are literally millions of MIDI files out there online. We have thousands of them at wizardtunes.com. You can find them at classicalarchives.com. You can download them, and they open up in your game as a game. You can take them to any level you want. You can choose any part of that uh, MIDI file, any, any part of that song. You want to play the, the guitar part. You want to play the violin part. You want to play the bass part. You want to play the piano part. You want to play the melody. These are all available through the, through the game in our premiere mode, and that's, that makes it open-ended so you, know, you can learn the songs that you love. What this does, what this breakthrough in music education really does that's most exciting is it takes the wide-ranging educational and developmental benefits and therapeutic benefits for children, seniors, and 
and then it allows anyone to have access to that. Not just someone who can pay a music therapist who can suffer through, you know, uh, traditional, you know, approaches to, to learning to play music. This is now for everybody. Everyone begins in a very simple level, and they can go and evolve as far as they want to. And the music is what what really excites them. Okay, uh, so this is really an open-ended music learning system for life, and I, I want you to understand that how profound this is. Okay, so the value here proposition is dramatic. It's orders of magnitude better, faster, cheaper. And I know this sounds too good to be true, but go do your due diligence. Do the research. Look online. Watch these kids. Watch the, the results we're getting. Uh, you know, we, it's far more economical to use this as a, as a tool than, you know, traditional piano lessons. We don't say that you should eliminate piano lessons, but this will allow you all the piano lessons to be really effective. The kids will actually practice. It doesn't matter if you have the most brilliant piano teacher on the planet. If your kid doesn't practice, if you don't practice, it was worth nothing. And the practice is where you're always lost. You don't know. You don't remember. You don't can't decipher, can't remember how you're supposed to play this part. It doesn't work, and, and you just feel humiliated, and you go back. Either you're discouraged. All those things are gone. The game shows you exactly where to hit the, the right notes at the right time. Uh, so this is like thousands of dollars less on an economical basis. It's far easier to use. It's a compelling music video game experience, and it's very, very effective. The kids learn the songs in minutes, not months, and they've gone through as many as, as 20 songs in a single week. We guarantee that if you follow our method, you'll learn at least five songs in five days. And, and you know, you may think that's outrageous. We know that we're actually cheating, that the kids can go through, in a couple of hours, they can go through the first five songs. Easy. Okay, so we're so confident, and we can replicate this with virtually anyone. Uh, that would, you know, we make that kind of guarantee, and it, it's not us. You know, just watch the kids online, watch, watch what's going on. The beauty of this, the real thing that has rocked my boat and kept us going through all the development pain, all the, you know, raising of the capital, all the, uh, you know, left turns, right turns, all, all the struggle, is that. I learned the music as an adult, and this unlocked a, a part of me that I, you know, really despaired of ever being able to give expression. And so what I now have can unlock your dreams of making music. You know, Benjamin Disraeli said this, most people die with their music still locked up inside them. And I literally, at the age of 20, watching the Preservation Hall jazz band musicians thought, you know, man, that guy's 80, I'm 20. I've got to be able to learn something, and I decided to start studying music uh, as an adult, uh, seriously, as a personal spiritual quest. And I never imagined that my journey coming at it that late would result in the kind of insights that would allow me to not only learn music myself, but find a way for almost anyone to learn. And that's what Music Wizard can do. It can unleash the unique music inside all of us. And we invite you to learn more. Uh, please send in your, your questions now, and uh, you know I'll get to some of those. Uh, you can also claim your Piano Wizard Academy right now uh, if you want to click the button below. Uh, but I'll be going through some uh, other questions here. Let me, let me my uh, my assistant is interpreting them. Let me let me look here what we've got so far. Let's see. Um, first question that I get a lot is. How did you come up with this? Uh, as I kind of inferred, my background is very unique and different. I was a linguistics major in college, and I was just fascinated with music and decided because I could, I could take some elective music classes, that I would sign up for some music courses. And one of them I signed up for was a group piano class taught by Don Beatty, who I stayed friends with you know, ever since then. Uh, he, he was a renaissance man, a completely unique, completely crazy, no sacred cows kind of music teacher, very, very inspiring, uh, great human being, and just really believed that this group piano class, which was normally just a, you know, an obligation for music majors who are like a flute major or something, they had to get some keyboard skills. Um, he thought this was a vehicle for, you know, true musicianship, and he, he is a music teacher more than a piano teacher. Um, he's a fine, fine piano teacher, don't get me wrong. But his whole agenda is really music. 
and he's a very passionate man about music. So he taught us musical principles and how do we do how to render those on the piano. So with, by doing that, I stayed in his group piano class for a couple of years and learned so much. I came, became very inspired in parallel with my language studies. I started taking a lot of other music courses, and I stayed in his course for two more years as an audited, you know, just to without credit. And I audited his piano pedagogy classes where he taught music majors how to teach in his method and uh, very profound learning from this one man. But I also, you know, studied music theory, history, all these other things. But every other course that I had at that university was almost medieval, uh, very very much the old school music education and mediocre in, in the, for the large part. Uh, and so I saw this kind of contrast between teaching styles. He took a very childlike approach to music, and the other teachers were very abstract, right? And so I, I saw this parallel between the way we learn a native language as a child and the way we learn a second language, right? And I became very fascinated with this. And I actually uh, took that, and I, I had so many music courses at the end that I, I saw that I could take a few more courses and end up with a double degree in music and linguistics. And frankly, this appalled my other music teachers, but uh, you know, I, I was able to get that degree and then leverage that. And I went to the University of California, Los Angeles, and I, 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 I got into a program, uh, an ethnomusicology program, the anthropology of music, because I had an idea that there are certain cultures that learn music as if it's a native language. And I looked at Brazil as being one of those uh, where it's an extremely musical population, and yet they don't have conservatories or, or, you know, they have some, but, you know, very, very few. And so I ended up going to Brazil for two years uh, and studying uh, on a fellowship, and that was where I got my insight into how visual this could be. And, uh, you know, it, it cultivated over years. I, I literally... Um, it has started, this, this idea began to form literally in 1984. I learned to type after a couple of failed college courses on a Lisa 2 computer on a little computer game. And I thought there ought to be a way that you can learn to read music uh, as well. And so that was kind of the background stimulus in parallel. I was fascinated with how people learned in Brazil. I, I joined the samba schools there. I joined the, I learned to play guitar. And I saw this visual side of it that that I was able to integrate into the MIDI technology and create this game. So it's a long, strange story, and, uh, you know, the, the short answer is my twisted mind. Uh, I just, you know, I think in some ways I was born to, to do this. And here's another question. Um, what's the difference between the Academy, the Premier, and Easy Mode? Uh, well, the Academy contains all of the above, uh, but the Easy Mode is basically the 100 songs in uh, there's there's the premiere comes with 200 songs and the easy mode is contained in that and those hundred songs of easy mode are are really the curriculum the core curriculum of the academy uh, the problem is no one knows what to do with that um, you know you can you can follow it through on all four levels but it doesn't it's not really a complete music education experience it's it's a great tool and it's a great sequence a great curriculum but you kind of, you know, as, as an end user, you, you have no idea what to do with this. And there's a lot of things that are not there. All the musicality, right, that, the, you know, only, uh, you know, a human being can really transmit. Things that are outside the game scope. Again, the game teaches you to hit the right notes at the right time and then to read very naturally and very fluently. But it does not, you know, teach theory. It does not teach, you know, uh, posture or technique. None of that. That's what the academy was created for. So... We, once we had this uh, curriculum created, Don Beatty actually stayed my friend, and uh, when I first showed him the first iteration of the game, he said, well, these songs are just a collection of songs. They're not really a, you know, a curriculum. Do you mind if we create one? I was just, you know, thank you, God, um, because this man has, you know, at that point, decades of experience. His wife, Delena, joined him, and she had a lot of experience working with small children. So they co-created this, uh, this academy with us, and really brought real mastery to this, you know, to this process. They're the true piano wizards. And that academy then became a series of 50 video lessons, starting with the first 50 songs of the 
uh, of the easy mode curriculum. And that's, again, we, we saw kids go through 20 of them in a single week, and that's where I said, look, you have to, you have to tell us what you're doing. There was a lot more science and art into this uh, creation of this curriculum than I'd ever imagined, and they were getting spectacular results. So he videotaped this and shared it, and I said, look, I don't want this to be shared with just piano teachers. Share this. The game is so simple. Share this with parents, non-music educators, absolute lay people. I want you to go there. Of course, add the, the, the little insights for the piano teachers in there. And that's what they did. And this has been a spectacular success. People are getting this with no music experience, no you know, education experience, and just teaching themselves, teaching their children, and having a ball. And uh, they're, they're so wonderful. So the academy is really the epitome of everything. It's what we worked for all these years, and it's the complete package that gives you not only the tools, but what to do with them. And, uh, and that's what we're very proud of here. Uh, let's see. Why the emphasis on reading music? Okay. Um, this is partly my, my dilemma. I learned to play the piano with Don Beatty, and I learned to decipher sheet music and learned to memorize pieces I memorized. He gave me a Bach fugue after two years in his class. It was well beyond. Remember, I just started playing piano in his class. It was well beyond what I thought I was capable of. But I went and I, I memorized right hand, left hand together, uh, measure by measure, this whole box fugue uh, that was took me four months to really get it under my hands, playing two hours a day. It was an immense achievement. But once I did that, I felt I was completely free in terms of I had a way that I could decipher any great piece of music. Um, you know, and I was, well, com you know, I basically... Uh, committed to the fact that, well, I can do this, you know, I would accept that it'll take me a lot longer than with someone else who could actually read. But I never really got to that fluency, and I always thought, I mean, this is so awkward, this is so, why is it like this, and why do they have sharps and flats? And I questioned everything about music notation, because it was, I was here I was, a college-educated adult having such a hard time learning to read, and I thought, this is a whack system, right? And I really began to think of things. But yet I also realized... Uh, you know, kind of like the Chinese uh, characters, they can't go back to the Roman alphabet, right? I mean, they must have looked at the alphabet, you know, when they first saw it and said, oh, my God, you know, that's what we should have done. But at that point, if you know anything about Chinese characters, there's so much poetry, meaning, history, uh, culture embedded in that, in those characters. Uh, it's precious. It, it's subtle. It's, it's unique. It, it's amazing. Uh, they can't go back. They can't abandon that. They have to stay with that system, as, as complex it is, as, it, as much as it seems a hindrance to modern education. Um, it's who they are. And music education, uh, music notation is who we are. We have a thousand years of musical literature, and there are treasures, I guarantee you, treasures buried in that music literature that we would lose forever if we, you know, stopped teaching people to read notation. So... I looked at that in my experience, being able to decipher even those those pieces, what a revelation it was to, to play those chords and, and discover those melodies talking to each other and discover that genius of Bach, right? The music notation, whether we like it or not, is here to stay, and music notation, to me, is the path to literacy and, and a deeper understanding of music. Um, I taught in the Peace Corps in Africa, for example, and the kids I was teaching out there in the Kalahari Desert, they were the first generation to learn to read. And, you know, Nelson Mandela's great, you know, example is, you know, we must be literate or we are completely, you know, exposed. It doesn't matter how strong your oral tradition is. If you do not are not literate, you are completely uh, at, at a loss compared to everyone else, right? So learning to read the great or the, or the popular music of the day gives you a, such a much broader range of understanding, expression, vocabulary, musical vocabulary, musical tools. Um, it's, just, it's just fundamental. It's something we need to do. It, there are many, many people who work their way around it without ever learning to read, but it is something that is fundamental to true mastery. Uh, you know, that only a few geniuses like the Billy Joel, the you know, the Elton Johns, that they, they, they really have, you know, learned the music almost like a native language on an oral level, and they're able to fake it. Uh, Billy Joel told me a, a very funny story of how, 
he hated reading and didn't like to read and never learned really. And his music teacher would give him these assignments, and he'd go home and he would play, be playing something. His mom would say, "Come on, you got to practice." And so he'd kind of fake a Mozart thing, and his mom would say, "What is that? That's my homework. It's Mozart." And then, you know, the next day, you know, he'd be fooling around and improvising, and she'd say, come on, get back to your homework, and he'd go back. To, but he couldn't remember what he had played the day before, so he played another thing like Mozart, right? And he would imitate this. And so by the end of the week, uh, after six days of practice, he's got a six-part Mozart concerto that he's kind of made up, and he'd go back to his lesson, and he still couldn't read. And his teacher said, you're never going to amount to anything, right? This, there's rare people that can kind of overcome those obstacles and that, and unfortunately, 90% of us fail, right? And this is for the rest of us. This really is for the rest of us to be able to, to read without the pain and the frustration and, and, and you know, the humiliation. So that, that's, that's why the reading. It's just fundamental to us becoming, you know, truly literate. Uh, here's the question. How fast do the kids or the adults transition to playing the real piano? I, I mentioned it in my uh, presentation here, uh, literally in the first 15 to 30 minutes on the first songs, we've seen kids go off the game over to the piano with the sheet music and read. It is stunning to us. We, we're like, wow. But it's it's such concrete learning. They learn by doing, right? And so then then we, we take that bridge of the notation and the fingering, and we take them off that. And, you know, not every kid is able to do that the first time, but... This is amazingly fast, and kids learn this on such a deep level, and if they need to go back and review a certain level, you know, that's fine. Uh, but we know that we can take them off the game to the real piano very quickly, certainly uh, far faster than any traditional methods that you've ever seen. Okay, here's another comment. Uh, this seems much more than a game. Why do you call it that? Well, the kids experience it as a game. Yes, of course, we've got a much deeper secret agenda, So, you know, in quotes. Uh, that the parents recognize right away, and this is what, you know, gets us up in the morning and really drives us, is that this is not a frivolous game. This is not a mind-numbing, pointless game. It's not a violent game. It is a game with a purpose and a, and a, a mission. Um, but it's still a game. If it wasn't a game, the kids wouldn't play it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Um, there are very many computer programs out there that are very serious and very, you know, thorough, and they don't work because the kids don't want to play them because it's, too abstract and too boring and not a game. This is why it's a game, because it works as a game. Uh, here's another question. Um, what's the secret to why this works? These results seem too good to be true, and we get that a lot. I remember my piano lessons, and it was hard. How can this be? The secret is amazingly simple. It's repetition, folks, and this is what I got from Don and Delena Beatty. Um, Don, in particular, when I, in my class with him, um, he teaches through something I would call repetition through variation. So we would learn a very simple folk song, and we would sing it first. We would walk it. We would use hand signals. Um, he has these Hungarian hand signals, Kodalai hand signals, that were just unbelievably hard to remember. Each do re mi, each, each you know note had a different hand signal, and it was. And then he would do it, you know. Uh, you know, forwards and backwards, and he would do both hands, you know, two parts. Uh, he, he was amazing in, in this. And um, But we would learn this song very many different ways. We'd learn it about a dozen different ways. We'd go to the piano and learn it in one key, move up, you know, into another mode. We would learn it, you know, uh, you know, by the fingering numbers. We'd learn it by the note names. We would learn it by, um, you know, say the white keys or black keys, what we were hitting. This embedded the song in our... Uh, in our minds in, in such a way. And this stuck with me so constantly. When I designed the game, it has all these different variations. You can choose different backgrounds, choose different game objects, choose different levels, choose whether you want guidelines in there, where you want the measuring lines in there, where you want no background or, you know, which background. This variation, uh, you know, and there's different challenges in there. The variations are what keep the repetition interesting. That if he had just said, oh, just play this song over and over and over, maybe we would have learned the song faster, but not deeper, and we would have hated it, right? Um, it, it just is that variation, repetition through variation, that keeps you engaged in the long haul and keeps you wanting to come back and keeps you stimulated and keeps you, you can always switch it around. And the kids are always doing this. They'll stop midway through the song, you know. I want to change it to, you know, Caterpillars. 
you know, great. But they're getting that repetition in there. And that, ironically, is the simple lesson. They learn by repeating it over and over, but they hit the right notes at the right time, so they learn correctly. And uh, and that's that's its secret. That's now that you know, <laughs> you know um, it's it's that. It's variation through repet- repetition through variation. Okay, um, somebody else said, what do I need to play the game? Um, you need a PC or a Mac. Uh, the PC should be Windows XP or above. Uh, the Mac should be um, OX10 or above. That's about it. The, the game comes with the keyboard. It's USB powered. It uh, color code stickers, the sheet music, the videos, the, the software. It's a complete package. Um, you know, and, and it's actually quite deep. And in fact, the songs uh, we have bundles now that you can get even more than the 200 original songs. And you know, there's finger work, fluency things that we we throw in there. So I would look at these promotions that we, we put together uh, from time to time. Um, that's all you need, though. Uh, and you can you can go. It'll work uh, on almost any PC or Mac that's out there. Uh, okay, here's another question. How many can play the game? I have eight kids. Do I need eight copies? No. Um, we do allow three installations per household. So if you've got a laptop, that, you know, and uh, you know the kids' computer and the parents' computer, that that's the maximum installations. But no, the game uh, allows you know any number of kids to play on it. You know. You, uh, in fact, that's a great way is two kids can play at the same time, left and right hand, and then alternate. But you also can have the kids go in sequence. One, the way we've got the academy is, again, we're trying to get them off the game, so we've made the feedback loop the, the goal of the stars. You get a star for level one, a star for level two, a star for level three, four, and then five is off the game reading at the sheet music. So you get your fifth star reading, but the, you've been looking at that sheet music as the goal the whole time. That you may have to order more books from us if you want them in the book form, or you can copy, you know, a Xerox copy of the uh, of that sheet music, and you know, so each kid has their own stars to keep track of. You may have to buy more of the, the little star stickers that you can get them at any office depot. Uh, but no, um, you, so we, we actually have a, a family uh, in Arkansas that uh, has eight kids, and they're homeschooling their kids, and they're all going gangbusters on this and they're all keeping scores separately and they're in the kind of little competitions and they're having fun. Uh, so have at it. Uh, here's a question. What do piano teachers think of this? Does this replace them? Well, Don and Delane are piano teachers and obviously they're on one end of the spectrum of absolutely supporting this and getting it, what it can really do and using it as a tool. And we've introduced this at the World Piano Pedagogy Conference and at first, you know, a certain portion is very cynical, uh, but once they see that we're teaching notation and that this is a practice vehicle, really um, powerful one, they really embrace it. Uh, that being said, there's still some, you know, PC phobic types, you know, old school piano teachers that, you know, know this is cheating, you know, as if, you know, they want to, you know, build your character by slapping you on the knuckles. But very, that's really rare. That that I would say is in, in, the, in the vast minority, two to five percent of the teachers. And if they sit in our booth, we win them all over. Um, if they really take the time and look at the, you know, because they're always full of questions. You know, they go two hours, they'll, they'll grill you. What about this? What about fingering? Oh, what about the note name? Oh, what about, what about, uh, you know, phrasing? Oh, what about, what about legato? Oh, oh, you have that. What about this? Right? And again, we, we came at it from an educational point of view. So once they see that profound mission on our part, then they buy in. Uh, but this absolutely does not replace them. In fact, what this allows them to do is focus on the art of music, which is really what they want to teach, uh, not the mechanics. This really takes the first two years. We, we look at this as training wheels for the piano. You know, but if they're going to take people to, you know, run the Tour de France, you know, they, they need the, the expert coaches to go the rest of the way. Uh, there's no way that uh, the game can, you know, take you to, you know, a master class level, right? But that master class requires so much fundamental work that is really rote and repetition and, you know, basic stuff that is not what they got into music to teach. Uh, though, though some of them are very gifted at that and really make it fun. The fact is the game has certain inherent advantages of automatic instant feedback that a teacher can't really compete with. Um, it, it, it's, it's like a treadmill, you know, and you, you just can't. There are certain things that are very good for a dedicated thing, you know, a, 
um, you know, one of these uh, pitch machines for baseball. There's no pitcher that can compete with that kind of repetition. The game is really superb at that. And, and once they realize its, its role in their teaching, they actually really embrace it because it also allows them to keep more students. It allows them to, uh, you know, teach more students at the same time. That we've seen uh, teachers set up labs of four, five, ten different computers at a time and go, you know, each of the kids is on headphones and, you know, coach them individually on their next levels and really, you know, multiply their income dramatically. You know, they can lower the cost to the student, increase their performance, and increase their income. So, yeah, when they really get it, they love it. Okay, uh, here's someone. I am tone deaf, but I love music and always wished I could learn. Is this just for kids, or can older folks play too? Well, look, I, I hear you. I was literally uh, never believed I had any talent for music when I started studying. I just thought, you know, through rote and repetition, I could learn some basic skills. So I, I understand how it feels to be on the outside looking in. But we have literally had not only a tone deaf person, but a deaf person. Uh, he's 60% deaf uh, and has been, uh, you know, he's his hearing aids. And his mother at the age of five told him, just forget about music, you're never going to be able to do that. And he was in his 50s, I think, uh, around 55. And he came in and we had him play Beethoven and we had him, and there wasn't a dry eye in that place. Um, because this was a dream deferred for him. He said, you know, my mom was wrong. I, I can do this. And you absolutely can. Um, you know, and he ended up buying a couple systems, one for himself and uh, one for his kids. And, you know, he, it's very important, I think, that we realize that we all have a musical dream inside of us. We don't have to become Horowitz or Rubenstein. We just need to, to be able to play something to express ourselves, to have a little bit of simple joy. And that's that's absolutely achievable, and there's great benefits for seniors as well in terms of keeping the mind active. Uh, you know, very important. Well, here's somebody. Uh, how do I know where my, to put my fingers? Um, there's a lot of anxiety out there because we've learned many times the only piano lessons we got, there was a five-note song, and we were told exactly where our fingers go, and it, it was kind of a crutch, and it helped us learn maybe one song. But from then on, we felt like we don't know where our fingers go, then we can't play. Well, look at any jazz musician. Look at you know these classical guys. We have ten fingers. There's 88 keys on a full-size keyboard. There's obviously only conventions about fingering, not rules. There's no one finger for one key. Right? Um, it varies on the piece, it varies on the passage, it varies. Um, and we have actually mapped out for you the first hundred songs have every single note has a fingering information. All you do is enable it in the easy mode uh, or in the premiere mode in the visual menu, just enable it and it'll show you those fingerings. But we actually put in also a feature in the premiere mode where you can download a brand new song off the internet and uh, you know, and MIDI files don't have any fingering information inherently in them. But you can go in there, and it'll render them as game objects. You can then click on those game objects in the freeze menu, and it'll pop up two hands, and you just assign right or left hand which finger you want on each note. And those stay in that song. They're memorized in the song, and uh, you know, you can change them. And piano teachers love this. They can go in there, and people's hand sizes are different, so their approaches are different. Um, so there is a feature in the game that will allow you to either see the fingerings that are already in the first hundred songs in the easy mode curriculum, or they will allow you to change that or put new new fingerings in for new pieces that you want to load. Uh, okay, here's one I get uh, a lot. I'm, I'm surprised when I actually confess this. I'm not very comfortable with computers. They usually just means they're terrified of computers. Um, is this hard to set up and use? Uh, we actually always knew that this was not, you know, for computer geeks. This is really for the mass markets, people who just want to learn to play music. So our help materials are very visual. Um, I'm a very visual person, so we have a setup poster that's very simple to follow. Um, we have a video that's two little kids setting up the, the system. We have, uh, you know, help demo files like flash files that take every single screenshot and show you what every single button does in an interactive uh, way. And then you have, um, you know, that's, those same graphic files are used within the game in the in-help file, so you can see a graphic, you know, map of, of what everything does. 
We have online uh, frequently asked questions. We have online videos. We have video tutorials online that you can go to. Um, so we're very extensive on that. And so the short answer is no. It'll take you a while. You have to, you know, install the software, install the hardware, uh, put the color coding on. It takes maybe half hour, 45 minutes to, to get it all set up and get going, register, do everything right, you know, get the game updated. But once you do that, you're done. You don't have to do any of that again. Your 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 config, keyboard configuration is there. You're set, and it, you go. Um, but again, you you walk through this, and I made intentionally two little kids set it up in our video to show how simple it really can be. I know what you're thinking. Go, oh, yeah, little kids know know how to set things up better than me, but um, you can do it. Uh, Don and Delana Beatty were also very much you know not computer people when they started this and had to get comfortable with it. And they they found it quite easy. And, and as Delana said, you know it, it's a game. You know it's not that hard. So, no, have at it. Um, another question. I watched some video samples online. Don and Delana Beatty are so patient and sweet. Where did you find them? Well, you know, Don and I, uh, you know, have been friends for decades, and uh, he, he got married to Delana, and she's just amazing. And when I first was able to create the first prototype of the game, I sent them that for their feedback, and they were quite skeptical, but, you know, began to see the potential of this and then began to contribute ideas and then, you know, asked if they could create the curriculum, which I jumped at. And then once we had the curriculum, we had a couple workshops and I saw how powerful it was once you had organized that curriculum in leveraging the game's power and what they did with it. Right? That was what was amazing is that they had, you know, really took that little two-note song and made it a real lesson uh, in music. And, and that is what we put on the video. So, I've just been very, very blessed, and they are—they are wonderful, and they've contributed, uh, you know, uh, far beyond in, in forums and in teleseminars. You know, they're just great. Um, here, you said we can download new songs. Where can do we get them? Uh, we get them on uh, WizardTunes.com, which has thousands of songs, and we're updating that uh, as we speak. We'll be getting tens of thousands of top pop songs on there that you can buy. And then uh, you can also go to classicalarchives.com. You can do a search and download uh, MIDI files online, but it's it's a box of chocolates. You don't know who created them or what you're getting, how they're arranged. Um, but Wizard Tunes, most of those are arranged specifically to work well with Piano Wizard, and uh, and as well as uh, classicalarchives.com is more again kind of a box of chocolates. But it's all classical pieces, and uh, you know there's all there's tons and tons of songs out there. But the game allows you to open virtually any MIDI file. It won't hurt your system, you know, no matter where you get them. But you just don't know who designed them. They were, we we're leveraging a technology that's been around for 20 years. So, you, you know, these a lot of these MIDI uh, files were not designed for the game, and so it might be weird the way it looks at or how it's arranged. And you, you kind of got to look around to find good good arrangements. Uh, but again, WizardTunes.com is the first place I would look. Um, Oh, here's a great question. I have a child who's autistic. Can this help? Do you need a music therapist to work with it? Uh, we've gotten dramatically uh, strong anecdotal evidence that this works very well with autistic kids. In particular, uh, there's a school in New Jersey that's done work with about 200 autistic kids, and they gave us, a, you know, rave reviews that the kids are responding dramatically, getting. Some got 100% the very first day. Many got, you know, even low-functioning autistic kids got, getting 100% in the second and third tries. Uh, moving kids who don't even respond to meal time or bathroom uh, are we're, we're trying to, you know, come over and play the game when it was time. So there's something about this game. Uh, the visuals are resonating, and music therapy for kids with autism is one of those bridges, those social bridges that are so crucial. Uh, language, they, they don't look at parents in the eye, they don't, um, you know, hug very much. These things that must be heartbreaking for the parents of autistic uh, kids. And, uh, you know, but music is one of those bonds that, that, that bridges that. And so we're delighted and we're, you know, we don't have white papers or research on this uh, that's formal yet, but the early response is that it's very effective and we have, we have many kids with special needs. Uh, Severely uh, retarded children are able to do this and very, very well. Uh, we have kids with Down syndrome, kids with ADD. Uh, it goes on, and you know, 
it's really, uh, and as I said, even deaf people can play this game. Um, we don't have anything for the blind at this point, but I'm, I'm working on that for a future iteration. But, uh, no, this is very effective, and uh, it, it's so simple that it's able to cut through, you know, a lot of other things that require language, and, uh, you know, this does not. So, no, and so the, the, you asked also, the, do you need a music therapist? No, you do not. Um, you can do this yourself. This is how simple the game and the Academy videos in particular walk you through with no music experience, no teaching experience. It's just you really become a coach. You just show the kids the next levels, the next levels you set up the game and let them go at it, and they learn by doing. So, no, um, if you know a music therapist, this would be great for them as well, though. It's a great tool for them. And, boom, here I've got another question. I am a music teacher and a therapist. This sounds amazing. How would I use it in my classroom? Um, as, I, as I referred to earlier, you literally have, um, you know, just set up multiple computers. That's the challenge. If you just have one computer and one system, everyone's fighting over when they get to play, right? Um, you know, if you're working one-on-one, -on -one, with uh, the kids, great. But if it sounds like you've got a classroom environment, um, it's just the number of computers that you have that you that is your limit on how to use this. But uh, the the academy video lessons will show you again. They're they're designed for non music educators, parents, and music teachers. So there's a section in the notes, and there are notes of the of what's in the video lessons next to each song. And these notes are very profound, but there's a certain section of those notes that's specifically for music teachers. And though they're not specifically for therapists, I think your experience will let you leverage that uh, very quickly. Okay? Oh, uh, I think I'll take this one as the last question. Where were you when I was growing up? Look, I hear you. I wished I had this when I was growing up because I was one of these jock kids that, you know, thought... Piano lessons were terrible and boring, and I didn't want to have anything to do with them. And I saw what my sisters went through, and they hated it, and I, uh, I missed the boat. I really regretted it, and, I, and, and that was a profound regret when I got to be an adult. I, I really felt this was something I had to do before I died, I, and I got inspired partly because of seeing these old guys at the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. But this is now available, and it's a completely different shift. I mean... Um, you know, it, it's it, it's completely new. I, I think of it like the Internet was around for 20 years and only scientists in the military could use because you had to type in the exact URL to get any files. Uh, and then the browser came where you could click on an underlined word and, you know, uh, or on a game, on an object, right? So this is kind of a musical browser. It just opens up a thousand years of musical literature for all of us to learn and play. And, you know, that, that tool, you know, that vehicle is really the point of this. A browser in itself is nothing. It's what it un un unleashes, unlocks for us, is that the magic. And that's what this game is, just a browser. What it unleashes, what it unlocks for us is the true magic here. And I just invite you all to really share, uh, you know, your experiences with each other and to look deeper into this. Uh, it is absolutely true, everything that I've said here. Uh, it may sound too good to be true. We give you an unconditional money-back guarantee, and, in fact, it's going to exceed your expectations is, is what most people are experiencing. So my mission is really to, to share the gift that I was given by Don Beatty with the world, right, this gift of being able to play music, and being able to play music as opposed to just listen to music, it's like being able to dance as opposed to just watch someone dance. It's, you know, I felt, you know, in that sense, almost like I was in a wheelchair watching, you know, the world dance. And then I was able to get out of my wheelchair and play and dance in that world myself. And it's made all the difference. As a, you know, as a musician now, I have such a deeper connection with my fellow human beings and with the world uh, that I never really anticipated. I, on a spiritual level, I look at primary reality is vibrational, you know, and the secondary reality is material. And something about music takes us right to the language of God. That is the primary reality. 
and it has been uh, it's been a joy to be able to speak that language, and I'm glad to be able to share that opportunity with all of you. Thank you all, and good night. All right, hello again, everyone. This is your host, Matthew. Thanks again, Chris, for that great presentation. Now, before we conclude today, I want to let everyone know that below that pink arrow you see on your screen right now, you're going to see the, get ready, this is long, Chris, I'm ready to claim my Piano Wizard Academy Now button. That's a mouthful. Now, because you're here right now and ready to take action, by clicking that button, I want to share with you everything that you're going to receive. First and foremost, you're going to get the Chris Salter Personal Guarantee, which is 60-day risk-free trial to test out the Piano Wizard Academy in your home. If you don't like it for whatever reason, no questions asked, return it for a full refund. In addition to that, if you use the Piano Wizard Academy system just as it's been designed, we promise you will learn five songs in five days of your money back. Now, I don't know very many people that can make that guarantee. Um, so, uh, you're probably asking at this point what's in the box. Now, if you bear with me here, I'm going to run through really quickly what's all included in the Piano Wizard Academy. Uh, you're going to get the Academy Quick Start DVD. This is the first DVD that you're going to watch. Um, you're going to obviously get the award-winning software to install on your computer. You're going to get 200 songs total, um, plus the ability to import and learn thousands more of your favorite songs. These are MIDI files, so you have the ability to import MIDI files into this game system. It will recognize it, and you can learn everything you hear, top 40 on the radio, whatever it is that you listen to. Um, all the old stuff, all the old great stuff, you can put it in here and listen to it. You're going to get the color-coded keyboard stickers. You're going to get the star sticker reward system. Most importantly, you're going to get the professional full-size four-octave keyboard and the USB cable for that to plug directly into your computer. Now, uh, in this system, the actual curriculum, you're going to get 50 video lessons on 10 DVDs and sheet music for 50 songs, five books of 10 each. So that's that's the, the brunt of the back-end curriculum. It's pretty much equivalent to about two years uh, of children's piano curriculum, um, and it's geared towards the parents. So non-musical -mus educators and piano teachers, it's everybody. You can, you can learn from this process and, and be coached all the way through um, every phase. So uh, all that's there. Now, in addition to that, that's what's gonna come in the box when you get it on your doorstep. Um, what, what else are you gonna get? You're gonna get a whole list of bonuses that I'm gonna read off very quickly. Um, time's kinda limited here. I'll get you guys off the phone. The bonuses here, uh, the number one bonus you're going to get, you're going to get a Christian worship CD. It has over a hundred of the most beloved world-renowned hymns and gospels easily imported into the system. You're going to get six months worth of monthly coaching teleseminars from Chris Salter personally, so you can optimize your progress, your family's progress on the system. Um, you're also going to get the 50-piece fing fingerwork fluency song pack, so it makes scales um, and drill work easy and simple to learn. Um, you're also going to get Beatty Etudes. It's a unique collection of profound thoughts and quotes on music. This was from the co-creators of Piano Wizard Academy, Don and Delena Beatty. This is a great, uh, great thing. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, you're also going to get the Piano Wizard Academy Kids Safe browser uh, that you can install on your computer to help keep your kids safe from all the perils of the internet. You're also going to get um, the 90-minute Getting Started teleseminar. So this is a step-by-step -step guide um, for getting the most out of your Piano Wizard Academy system. It's an hour and a half long going through all the, the uh, in-depth details of that. You're going to get exclusive access to the Piano Wizard Academy forum. It's created express, uh, especially for you. It's not open to the general public. Um, you'll have access to that with uh, Mr. Chris Salter himself moderating. You're also going to get um, two more things. A bonus report, which is uh, details on uh, discovering how to earn extra income with the Piano Wizard Academy just by simply sharing it with others. And then you're going to get a six-month uh, monthly teleseminar uh, support for that if you're interested in in that piece um, you'll have that support system as well so a lot of stuff I want to thank you guys for tuning in I do want to tell you though that this package uh, everything that I just listed that's included in this package because you were referred by one of our select partners you're not only getting a great great price break on the system itself you will not find it for this price point anywhere else um, but in addition to that you are getting all these bonuses that you won't find anywhere else. And again, this is an invite only offer. You won't find it, you won't see it anywhere else. You have to be invited, you have to be referred in, and 
the select part our select partners have negotiated special pricing special bonus packages specifically for you take advantage of it now if you're ready to do it uh, click the button below it's not going to be there uh, very much longer uh, gain access try it out use that trial period you have 60 days you are guaranteed to learn five songs in five days or your money back I want to thank you guys for tuning in today I'm Matthew your host signing off have a great day mm -hmm.